What is this? Do you know? Yes, it is shifting cultivation or slash and burn cultivation, locally known as jhum cultivation, and it is practiced by Riang tribal groups in Tripura. Yes, Riangs. They are the second largest primitive tribal group in Tripura, with one lakh eighty-eight thousand two hundred twenty population. They belong to Indo-Mongoloid racial stock. They mostly reside in the dense forest of Ambasa, Salema, Manu, Chamanu, and Dambornagar of the Dhalai district in the state. They traditionally practice jhum cultivation and gather forest products like fruits, leaves, tubers, roots and plants, and hunt wild animals and birds for the subsistence of their life. Jhum cultivation is accompanied by various socio-cultural activities. First, they clear a plot of land on a hill slope and reserve it by pitching two bamboo poles. Then they worship their deities and sacrifice various fruits and pray for a rich harvest. They sow seeds in the first monsoon showers and grow varieties of crops like paddy, maize, cotton, betel nut, vegetables, banana, pineapple, etc. Riyans engage in varieties of activities like collection of edible forest products, hunting of wild animals, birds, fish, etc. Some of them are involved in wage labor, weaving of clothes, preparing bamboo materials, blacksmith activity, etc. The other major occupation of Riyans is rubber farming. introduced around 1963 by the forest and soil conservation department tripura rubber is an important product emerged from rubber tree or hevia brasiliensis tapping is a method of extracting natural rubber which involves making incisions in the bulk and collecting the fluid in vessels attached to the rubber trees its liquid is a sticky milky sap called latex which goes through a few steps before being solid rubber their source of earning are jhum cultivation rubber farming weaving crafting daily laboring etc in spite of these many families are indebted their house types show that they first conduct wooden platforms about few feet from the ground on the slope area of the hill then they set bamboo pillars on the platform and construct a roof on the pillars fences are made around bamboo pillars as a reason for the high platform they can restrict houses from the flow of water and save themselves and their cattle from snake bite and wild animals generally riangs construct two houses one in the village and another near the jhum field to watch products Their house usually consists of a single common room with a veranda. There is no separate kitchen or toilet in the house. They mostly collect water from the hand pumps, public well, pond and stream and take bath there. They avail toilet facilities in the forest. Electric connection is almost nil. Many villagers use solar lamps installed under the government scheme. Kerosene lamps, earthen dyers, etc. They use undulating hilly footpaths whereas concrete road are rarely found. General stores are available but the healthcare center are available at the block level. They prefer to for nuclear family while joint families are rarely existed there. As like family they are having exogamous clans. They are divided into two clan groups. Maska and molsoi meska group includes seven subgroups whereas molsoi group is having six subgroups they belong to the clan by birth and married women become members of their husband's clans they are related through blood and a final kinship bonds they use kinship terminology like a father as apa and mother as amo They never call the names of husbands and husbands' elder brothers. Riyans prefer traditional birth practices by midwives. 
At the time of labor pain, old women gather in the house and worship Kebengma, Konkonokoma, and Maitukma deities. They perform Tui Chao and Being Bumo rituals on different days after birth and sacrifice pigs and four fowls for the good health of baby and mother. After birth, the next event is marriage. Ryang's prefer negotiation marriage Halaksam at an early age through matchmaker Andhra. Marriage by forbidden relation Halakchaya, service by exchange, love marriage, cross cousin and parallel cousin etc. are allowed there. With grandeur feasts and folk dance, Sangruma and Tichamo pujas are organized to celebrate marriage. Ryans generally cremate dead bodies on the bank of river. A dead body is buried in case of death caused by infectious diseases. After cremation, they collect residual bones, paroxysma, and immerse these in the river. Their rituals are started before the funeral procession and ended with post-funeral luklaimong. Then, earthen pot covered with fish and rice is placed at the feet of a diseased person, followed by folk dance. After that, properties are confined among the Sundai, who is his son and grandson. Women have no right to the parental property. Every woman is busy with household works. She has to play the roles of wife, mother and teacher in family life. She is devoted to caring her children for their upbringing. Mother trains her daughters in all activities like cooking, weaving, knotting, etc. She uses to accomplish her prime duty of cooking, washing clothes, cleaning houses, collecting water, preparing rice beer, husking paddy, collecting fuel, etc. Ryangs are influenced by the tibeto burmese language and speak the dialect Kaupru, which originated from two words, Korok and Parok, meaning language of human. There are no scripts of their spoken dialect. They speak Bengali and eat their traditional food, rice with local vegetables like green leaves, bamboo shoots, roots and pulses. Their special red rice produced in chew fields is so tasty. They eat non-visitable food items and drink arak rice beer. Traditional implements of Ryangs are dasukai, dama, dosa, dama dosa and eggs which are used for cleaning bushes, cutting forest products etc. They use chempai, kalbang and maiku cylindrical baskets for carrying materials. Their dresses indicate that men wear merely traditional langut just to cover their private birds, loincloth and handwoven turban. Women put on a long piece of colorful cloth, pasra or rinai to cover their lower part and a short piece of cloth, risa, to cover their chest. Mostly, young women wear necklaces made of silver or metal coins. Notable women's ornaments are Rangbutang and Anchali, worn around the neck, tar for the forehead and yachao for ears. They wear their dresses and ornaments in a meticulous way and they are found very beautiful. Their dresses and ornaments play a great role when they perform folk dances. They perform their traditional dances like Hojagiri, Goria, Damhar, Chiro, Rathnach, Yakshagana, etc. at different times with folk music and songs. Ryangs are proud of their indigenous arts and crafts. They collect bamboo canes, leaves, grass, wood, etc. from their forests and prepare baskets, cases, cylindrical vessels, fishing traps, etc. Women weave colorful clothes like rinai and risa for women 
and pandri and kutai for men their hand woven clothes are always demanded by others the visit tirthamukh mela bana bihar mela bishukani etc at different times and enjoy they are enthusiastic to celebrate goria puja manukma kozagari vastu puja goria puja ker puja manukma and kumaukma for various purposes they also celebrate their popular festival bhushu during their festivals they meet with each other they sacrifice traditional cooked food local rice brew seasonal fruits animals bards etc and perform traditional dances formerly the youth dormitory do i know existed in every young village nowadays dormitory rarely exists and adolescent boys and girls hardly hold there to borrow knowledge and skills from elders instead of the dormitory there exist community hall that is mostly used by the traditional political head chaudhary with other subordinates to work on solidarity settle their disputes and organize religious activities but nowadays ryangs meet with elected politicians for all problems ryangs worship matai kotor toy boma kania and care deities for wealth availability of water saving from epidemic and natural calamities etc they believe both benevolent spirits like buraha and longdry and malevolent spirits like sangrangma manokma and kunokma they believe that after death invisible spirits known as phola are available in their surroundings to create misfortune therefore they worship water fire stone forest and soil under the supervision of the traditional priest okchai for all well riyans inhabit in undulating hilly forest regions and avail better environment there is no record that they damage forest properties they collect only dried fuel for cooking purposes they participate in various plantation programs but recently trees and forests are randomly cut down by others many floras and faunas are extinct which hamper the environment riang still believe their magical religious healthcare practices but many of riang's take herbal medicines from traditional healers vaidya He sells herbal medicines like boiled roots of jiran plant to relieve from constipation, leaf paste of yangma plant to restrict bleeding and wound, the leaf extract of kungcha korma to cure from fever, boiled leaves of turkin mondan to cure chronic health problem, etc. Riyangs are not holding better educational status. Merely 39.8% Riyangs are literate. But nowadays different schemes are being implemented by government to set up better infrastructure facilities in schools and to give an effective teaching learning environment for improving their educational status infrastructure facilities teaching learning process roles of smc and parents etc in schools of riang areas are highlighted in this presentation Almost all schools are having school buildings. Some schools are facilitated with playgrounds, boundary walls and electric connections. Toilet facility is available but not in better condition. The availability of drinking water is not so good. The medical facility is nil. Schools are having small library but the collection of books is not found adequate. Teaching learning materials are available but the ICT facility is nil infrastructure for disabled students is not found there both local and outside teachers are posted in schools and they mostly work permanently young children are habituated to talk their own dialect kapro which is unknown to non tribal teachers 
All books are also written in both Bengali and English, which creates difficulties for tribal students. The number of teachers are inadequate in accordance with RTE Act 2009. Most of the teachers start classroom teaching by asking questions about previous chapters and assessing the understanding of students. If there is any doubt, teachers further discuss in brief for a clear understanding of students. As per the developed lesson plan, they teach with teaching aids, engage students and use local arts and crafts, folk songs, dance, folk tales, etc. for their content understanding. Out-migration of Riyang tribes increases dropout of children. As remedial measures, teachers visit the houses of absent students, encourage them and their parents, and organize special classes to fill their curricular gaps. They also occasionally organize PTM and discuss various issues like the improvement of reading writing skills of children, their concept understanding, their test results, punctuality, their homeworks, etc. Teachers are less privileged to participate in teacher training programs. Training and computer related activities is totally new, but they gain basic ICT knowledge through their mobile phones and they can send and receive emails, download and upload materials and search educational materials for use in classroom teaching. SMC members mostly belong to the Riyang community. They look after all development activities such as school building, furniture, boundary and gate of school premise, sports facilities, etc. They try to install electric connections, ICT facilities, etc. while they merely watch pedagogical issues. The interference of parents in schools is also very limited. Many parents are busy in their professions and they rarely participate in PMT. Overall, it is highlighted that Ryangs are the followers of their socio-cultural orthodox and heartily connected with nature. Through their friendly relationship with nature, they try their best to protect natural products. It is also highlighted that in spite of their inhabitations in remote natural surroundings, they are participating in formal educational systems and improving their educational status. Madhu Vata Ridayate Madhu Sharanti Sindhva Madhvirna Santvoshati